What is going on everybody and welcome to this tutorial video where I'm going to be showing you how you can do real-time debugging for your Android game that you built with Unity. And so basically what I mean by this is uh, I'm going to pop over into Unity and kind of show you here. Um, but I have this basic application where there's three buttons. There's a log button, a warning button, and an error button. And then uh, here's the code for it. Basically what happens is each of those buttons you press, it's either um, going to print out uh, just a standard debug.log message, a debug.log warning message, or a debug.log error message. Um, and then I just kind of have some counters here so we can see how many times we pressed each button. So basically, when we hit the play button over in Unity here, um, what's going to happen is uh, if we click the log button, it's going to do just a standard debug.log message. And you know, you can see we if we click it multiple times, it'll count up. And then if we click the warning button, you'll see now that there's a, a little yellow yield sign next to this. Um, basically, just it's, uh, it's a type of a log warning. And then again, we're counting up the number of times we do that. And then lastly, we have log errors. And so these are um, actually showing up with this like stop sign, this red stop sign. And again, we're gonna count the number of times we pressed it. So I'm sure if you've used Unity before, you're very familiar with that type of thing. Just looking at the uh, error console for uh, standard debug messages, uh, warnings and errors. And this can be very helpful for debugging. Um, so you can just make sure that certain functions are being called or certain values are kind of in a, an expected range. But now things get a little bit different when we actually wanna make a build of our game. If we wanna say build it and put it on our mobile device, we wanna be able to do real-time debugging while it's running on our device. Because sometimes when we're just testing in the Unity editor, we're not gonna have the full set of features that um, our touchscreen phone has. So real quickly, I'd just like to show off two ways that we can accomplish this. Um, so first thing, of course, you're gonna need the Android SDK installed on your computer. If you can build apps to your Android phone, then you're all set, you don't need to do anything more. Also, you're gonna need to have developer options enabled on your phone and allow USB debugging. Uh, feel free to check the description for kind of a detailed step-by-step -step of how to do that. All right, and so that's basically it. So if we just go back over into Unity and we open up our build settings here, uh, just make sure you have Android selected and go ahead and switch, hit switch platform if you haven't done that already. Um, basically, you can just leave the defaults as is. Um, if you want, you can check mark the development build option, but just be aware that when you do that, it's going to spit out a bunch of other things to the console, um, which are useful, uh, but may not be exactly what you're looking for. So I usually just leave that unchecked unless there's a specific reason that I'm using a development build. Um, so we can just go ahead and hit build and run here and we'll get this to run on my phone. All right, so now that we have the application actually running on my phone, we can start kind of doing some debugging with it. Um, of course, as you'll see, I can push these buttons all I want and nothing's gonna change on the screen because the code is basically only outputting things to the debug log. Now, how do we actually see the debug log? So there's two different ways that I'm gonna show you. Uh, the first and kind of the simplest way is uh, just to use the command line. Now we can just open up a command prompt in Windows here and uh, type in a quick little line of code that will allow us to see the debug messages coming from our phone. Uh, however, there is one thing that you need to do. You need to add the Android SDK platform tools to your system environment path. Feel free to check the description of how exactly to get here, um, but you'll see that I do have this one line that says D slash Android slash platform tools. And that's basically just where I have um, the platform tools set up. So then this will allow us to run this uh, single command. All we type in is ADB space logcat, and that's all one word. And then we're gonna use the dash S tag, and then we're gonna type in the word unity. So basically this runs the uh, ADB logcat program, and this dash S tag is going to filter out um, any of the debug messages with the tag unity. So if we hit enter here, you see that it just kind of does this little uh, operation and then you'll see that it prints out a bunch of things. And then so um, it's gonna print out all of the times that I push the log button and the warning button in here. Um, so these are, these are from when I already pushed it before, but you can see that as I continue to push the log button, it's going to, and keep printing out the log messages to the screen. Uh, now if we do a warning, you'll see that um, it's gonna be calling the on button warning function. And then again, like that. And then uh, lastly, we'll do the error. 
and then we'll do that. Um, so one way that you can kind of tell the difference between just a standard debug message and a warning message and an error message, uh, you'll see that right here, kind of next to each, each of the function calls, right before the unity tag, uh, you'll see there's a letter. So this letter I, that's for information. So that's just a standard debug message. Uh, the next is going to be W, and that's of course for warning. And the last is going to be E, which is for error. Now this is definitely not the prettiest way to view log messages. So I'm gonna show you a much better way to do it. So basically just go to your file explorer and then uh, you're gonna to want to go to where you have your Android SDK installed. And then you're gonna to go to the tools folder and you'll see that there's this monitor.bat. This is a, just a little bash file that will run. If you want, you can put like a shortcut of this to your desktop, you know, just right click on it and do create shortcut. And then you can put a shortcut on your desktop for uh, easy access. Um, but basically you're just going to double click on this. And then uh, it takes usually about like 30 seconds to open. So just kind of give it some time. All right, so that actually took a little bit longer than 30 seconds to open. So just be kind of a little bit patient with it. Um, but basically something like this is going to open up. Um, down at the bottom here, you may have to kind of like drag this up to, to resize it. I don't remember. I think it was a little smaller when I first started it. Um, but basically you'll see there's two tabs. There's a console tab and a log cat tag. So of course you'll remember the uh, log cat command from the command line. So if we just go ahead and click on that, uh, you'll see that we have all sorts of messages filtering through. And this is all the messages that are coming through um, on your Android device. So you know, whatever is going on on your phone is going to be appearing in here. And so I've already created this Unity filter, but I will uh, show you how to do this. Uh, you can go ahead and click on this plus button. So we can create a new filter here. Uh, we can just call this whatever we want. So we'll just say Unity tutorial and the log tag we want is Unity. And then by log level, we can actually sort by um, if we want to look for errors or warning messages. Um, but I just like to leave this on verbose because there's another way that we can filter through and I'll show you that in just a sec here. Uh, so we'll just hit okay. And then you'll see that we have this unity tutorial tag now. Um, so we can, we can go select whichever tags we want. And then you'll see here that we have, um, you know, already some log messages from previously, but we can go over to the right hand side of the screen and click clear log just to clear everything out. Now just back on our phone. If we, you'll see that when we hit the log button, It'll print out um, in green, it'll print out the on button log, you know, how many times that we've called it. Uh, next, we'll hit the warning button a couple times, and you'll see this kind of prints out in like a yellow orange. And then we'll hit the air button a few times, and this prints out in a red. So you can kind of filter through a little bit more color coded in this kind of way, so it is nice to have it like this. Um, also, over on the right hand side, you'll see that we can actually filter by different log levels. So info, info is going to show us um, basically all this here. Uh, sometimes when we start our application, there's gonna be some other things that appear in blue. Using this info tag, we'll actually filter out some of that blue stuff. Uh, next, if we go to the warning one, you'll see that it filters out just the info tag. So now we have the warning and error ones. So this is basically like, uh, the lowest level of stuff to show. So it'll show warnings and everything, you know, uh, more critical after that. Uh, and then of course, errors, we can hit the, you know, error tag and it will only show the application errors. And so that's just about it. So this is gonna wrap up this tutorial video. I hope you found it useful. If you did, make sure you hit that like button. Also feel free to subscribe to the channel for lots more tutorials like this one and really cool independent video game development related content in general. If you have any questions on this, feel free to drop them down in the comment section below. I hope you all have a fantastic rest of your day and I'll see you in the next one.